Hey, big bomber, how are you? Yeah, you hungry? Huh? You hungry? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, look at that. Paleobiologist Dr. Greg Erickson also studies gigantism, but he studies it from the other end of the food chain, the predators. Animal like this can generate 2,000 pounds of bite force. Ho, ho, ho. Imagine scaling this thing up to the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's, uh, you know, it's just mind-boggling to think about. Crocodilians perfected their killing ways back before dinosaurs arrived on the scene. So evolution hasn't had to tinker with their design much. And the St. Augustine Alligator Farm in Florida is the perfect place to study them. It has every living species of crocodilian, from dwarfs to giants. Like dinosaurs, crocodiles evolved into bigger creatures over time. This is the skull of a 160 million year old crocodilian. And one thing I want you to notice is that the skull of this animal is about the same size as the head of this hatchling alligator. This is an interesting pattern that we see in the fossil record time and time again. Members of the dinosauria, members of the crocodilia, members of the mammalia, all started off as very small organisms and only later diversified into much larger forms. The new coyote-sized crocodilian, Junker Sucus, illustrates the principle as well. It was only one meter long, but its super croc descendant was 12 times longer and happy to eat gigantic dinosaurs. Now that we have Guan Long, Erickson can explore how tyrannosaurs became enormous. He examines cross sections of the bones of Guan Long and its descendant T Rex. Like the rings in a tree, these show the animal's growth rates, and he finds an astounding difference. Guan Long was growing at a about 50 grams per day. T-Rex, 2.5 kilograms. It was an animal growing at five pounds per day. I mean, that's just mind boggling. I mean, just imagine how much flesh and bone that animal had to be consuming to, to sustain those rates. So Guan Long provides the baseline, a starting point that paleontologists can use to see how growth rates changed as tyrannosaurs evolved into giant beasts. If you look at the entire family tree of dinosaurs and you see the evolution of size laid onto that, one thing that's clear is that almost every different group of dinosaurs eventually becomes big. As the prey animals got bigger, it seems so did the predators. In the end, the real answer to what drove the supersizing may lie in the harsh dance of eat or be eaten there's evidence of an arms race going on. By getting gigantic, you can escape predation, but as you get bigger and bigger prey items out there, it opens up niches for bigger and bigger predators. This went back and forth over millions of years until both were really gigantic animals. The defensive escalation of predator and prey culminated in the ultimate predator, T-Rex. Its immense head and jaws, with a bite force rivaling anything seen in the animal world. 